Hi, this is Bob Weiss. I'm the host of Shaking Your World. Cheers. Folks, welcome home. Yet another edition of Shaking Your World. And here we are going to have Laura Brand tell us a story. I brought a few other uh, guests of Shakers. You've seen them before to um, help the process along. And these are some retired law enforcement uh, personnel. And uh, they have all sorts of marvelous stories about investigative techniques and um, what the process is like. But I'm really intrigued by uh, what Laura has developed in her new product. And so why don't we begin with that? Hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> um, yeah, so Bittaker and Norris, I'm known for the Bittaker and Norris case, the Toolbox Killers. Um, they had a van where the creepy van comes from is their case. Uh, they kidnapped girls out of South Bay um, in Los Angeles County, drove them up to the mountains, raped them, and used tools on them. We're earning them the moniker, Toolbox Killers. Um, they, I interviewed them for five years on San Quentin's death row. Um, and Bittaker actually gave me the two girls, that, the missing girls' uh, body placements, as well as where he buried the evidence that was never recovered. But it took um, three years to get that information out of him. <laughs> well, yeah. so how often were you actually in that investigative procedure with him? Oh, God, yeah. Every was, week, every month, every... Almost every day. Every day. Like, after he gave up the bodies, it was every day. I mean, we were on the phone every day. I was flying out there. Production was flying me out there. So mm -hmm. it, was, it got really extensive after that. And we were mailing maps back and forth to each other because, like, he drew it in the prison, but then I had to get the elevation maps and like, you know, the mountain maps and like all that kind of stuff. And then I had uh, the class organization came in and they got all another set of maps. So we're like mailing back and forth. It took about 15 months total for us to actually get the pinpoint locations. And then I actually got to go up. No, COVID hit. I couldn't get up to the mountains. So finally in 2001, over the summer, I actually got to go up the mountains and I took a metal detector he left the ice pick in the girl's ears. He left some of the metal in the bones. Uh, one of the girls that was recovered had the ice pick through the ear. If you watch the show, you actually see Jackie Gilliam's skull with the ice pick still embedded in it. And he actually would, um, so it didn't kill them when they put the ice pick in the ear. They, he actually had to remove it and then he stuck it in the other ear. And that still doesn't kill you. So we had to strangle him. And it reminds me of Dahmer in a sense with the drilling of the holes in the head and yeah. Um, yeah, so I went up there and I actually took the metal detector and I did a sweep of the whole uh, road. Never got a hit, but then I went to the uh, spot where he told me it was the only place it went off in the melon. Yeah, was the pinpoint location. What'd you yeah. find? We, I haven't dug. I won't take. I mean, I'm a criminologist. I'm not like a forensic e expert. So I just signed on to another production company and they're going to get the funding to actually go do a search with experts, with forensic experts to actually try to recover. With law enforcement? Yes, yes. Yeah, officially. Tell us, how did you break the ice with them? How did that process go? We actually started sharing information. You know, we, we did not get along. It was three years of, like, pure hell. Like, we fought, like, back and forth. He was, like, really nasty and degrading. And I would go back at him. And he's like, I don't want to talk to you. And then, like, I keep pushing him and go, didn't you take, like, English comprehension in college? And I'm just like, no, sorry, I didn't. <laughs> and then I don't. I got pregnant. This is how it all happened. I got pregnant. From him? No, no. <laughs> Sicko. <laughs> and um, it was, like, weird. That was, he, like, it was a switch, like, that I got pregnant. And he, like, got, he was warm and nice and started calling and writing all of a sudden. Then when I started looking into the case, there was two other pregnant girls when he was out in 1979 that lived next door to him, and they were pregnant, single moms. And he, like, bought them clothes and, like, paid their rent. And then I realized, oh, my God, there's something about the pregnancy. And when I, I also interviewed two other serial killers when I went in there pregnant, too. And it was like, they were so, it was so different. They were, it was a different vibe energy. It was like I had triggered their mommy issues or something, being in there pregnant. And they were, they all opened up, all of them, but especially Bittaker, of course, with the bodies and stuff. But it was weird because the other guys were okay with me, but Bittaker was like so degrading and it was just literally like a light switch when I got pregnant. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned Dahmer. Obviously, we are in Milwaukee today, and the uh, the home of Jeffrey Dahmer, at yeah. least of his most nefarious <laughs> acts. Um, you have a Cream City Cannibal shirt on yes. with a uh, lovely photograph, which was taken by this young man to yes. my right. I can't yeah. believe that. Yeah. So Phil was uh, working in booking at the time. I was. Actually, it was my first day back from vacation. I was working at the city jail. And when he come back, the first assignment was to go get this guy bring them in, do a 10 print, do palms and all the fingerprints we had to do. So I did it. And I didn't even know why he was down there for at the time because I, had, I was up north. I didn't hear any of these crimes at the time. So 
when you guys heard so, about the crime, like when you heard, well, actually heard what he did. Actually, yeah, when I returned him back to his cell, the sergeant mm -hmm. said, you know what he's in here for? I said, no. And then he told me, he said, oh my gosh, no wonder why I tried to eat some of my fingers while I was trying to figure it <laughs> No, that didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild. Yeah. yeah. You guys in that. Right, we had a calm demeanor. It was just like the photograph, I mean. That's really crazy. He's had. He was settled into what was going to happen to him already. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a relief. Yeah. Wow. How much evidence did you take from that apartment? I wasn't was there. Oh, but it must have been like I saw like caseloads of photographs of like everything coming out of that apartment. Oh, they were pulling barrels out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, just bodies and barrels in there. And wagons rolling up where they were just bringing up barrels. Where they were wearing the hazmat suits. Oh my god. Saw, yeah. And you know, you'd see on TV, you hear what's going on, and it's like, oh, is this shit gonna hit the fan? This is not gonna end well for our department. And it didn't. So, right, yeah. Wow. But they also had a task force on clearing missings now, too, mm -hmm. because a lot of the people killed were reported yeah. missing. They've been missing mm -hmm. for a while. There were a lot of missings with that. So. Wow. That must have been an experience. <laughs> so, Ray, you did uh, more than your share of things with homicide as well, investigations. Any. Any thoughts on the uh, the entire process of what goes into this? Well, as far as, you know, we've had serial killers subsequent to Dahmer with Walter Ellis, mm. who, um, you know, was notorious for killing prostitutes. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I was actually with the homicide unit at the time. We had a, a dedicated cold case unit, and they were the ones that went out to uh, develop Walter and did what they had to do. For the rest of us, it was... Well, actually, you know, the guys in the vice squad had heard about it, yeah. right? But it was just rumors from prostitutes on the street that yeah. they were telling us, there's a guy out here that's killing us. Oh. But we couldn't, we didn't have the techniques to put it all together. Wow. That's crazy. How far apart were um, Dahmer and his crimes? Oh, gosh. 20 years. Maybe, yeah. yeah probably. 15 to 20 years. Yeah. yeah. So you don't get like a lot of serial killers. Like it's kind of like a rare occurrence. Well, you or? never know until yeah, yeah, yeah. you find they, one. They caught, right. Right. Go back ten years and you realize right. animals yeah. been doing it for so long. Yeah. And I would suggest that it probably throughout the course of time there have been a lot of serial killers that have just never been identified, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah, and it, you also okay, you get a guy who's killed two people. All right. He's technically not a serial killer, but mm -hmm. if you would have not found him, mm -hmm. he would have probably been one. So mm -hmm. uh, we were talking before too about you don't see as many female serial yeah, killers. That's true. Uh, and our theory was because I think women in general are smarter and they like to let their victims suffer for 10, 20, 30 years. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> 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 familiar with that. <laughs> Except me, I'm, you know, I'm blessed. <laughs> the rest of you, poor slobs. Please help by looking at it. Good, yeah. Good disclaimer. Good disclaimer. One day she'll wake up. No. <laughs> yeah. You'd think. I mean, I own a mirror. I know what I'm working with. <laughs> so, Brian, on a federal level, you had to get uh, involved in, obviously, investigations on a daily basis as part of what you did. Um, nothing to the extreme portion of homicides, I would suspect. One homicide, One. no serial killers. Okay. Yeah. It's, you know, it's uh, always been interesting to me that we, I participated in a lot of crime scenes itself, and mm -hmm. just that whole process is, it's just, it's intriguing just to try to dig out the information. Mm -hmm. That's why I was asking you about the interview process, because that's my favorite part, is yeah. talking to people, getting them to open up. So it sounds like we have to get pregnant to gain their trust. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm halfway there. Yeah. So, <laughs> So Brian, when you're doing these, cups, so you're right. Right. doing good, kid. <laughs> My chest fell down. When, you, when you're doing these investigations, is it? Are you looking at someone's eyes when they're, you're talking to them? Is that a big part of that? You're looking for other tells when they're, you know, um, if they're smiling or something at different times, or if they're looking away, look the eyes. Well, right, first, left. you kind of like set a baseline. You sit down, okay. and talk to them. You just talk, get them open up. You don't even you start easy with them. Going, hey, how's it going? You don't want to come in hard. You never okay. come in hard. Get them coke or something. Go south. Talk to them, get them, get them to ease up their mannerisms. And you, as you're talking, as you, you ask them questions you know the answers to, you know, and you just let them talk, and you study them as they're talking. And so this way, you know how they're, how they're reacting when they're telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you kind of ease into other questions that make them more uncomfortable. 
or maybe they don't know the answer to it, they don't want to talk about, and then you study them, you can you show you the tells them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know? a, a documented lie is almost as good as the truth. Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you have to do a lot of follow up with that. Okay. I'd always like to know what the background was of the guy that you talked to. Oh, How yes. many times was he arrested? What crimes he was arrested for? What did he say to the coppers when he got arrested? How did he act at that time? And then we start, you know, I would start from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So rubber hoses have not been used for a while, though, right, right? Um, actually, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Just to get dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but actually, you know, the nicer you are, the more reliable the information. Okay. You know, when you're when you're threatening, when you're promising crap you can't deliver. Mm -hmm. Number one, the courts will throw it out, and they should. Mm -hmm. yeah. But number two, they know you're lying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. they're not. When someone screws up, they kind of want to say so. They want to, oh, God, I went and did this, just to get the affirmation from everyone yeah. else. It's okay. all so yeah. bad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, yeah, if sure. you start throwing them artificial lifelines mm -hmm. and, well, you force me into saying this or that, right. it, it's counter counterproductive. Okay. It's very counterintuitive. You, you, you really have to sit down, like Brian said, and just kind of, you know, we would sit down and just, who's your mom? Yeah. Who's your dad? Where did you go to school? You got any kids? You got any brothers and sisters? Okay. And you see how they react. Mm -hmm. You know, right. if, if he has mommy issues, he's probably going to, why you want to know my mom's name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, okay, well, this is something to kind of delve back on. If, you know, I don't know my dad or my dad's a puke or whatever, right. might be something you can also use, you know. Um, so, yeah, the rubber hose and stuff is fun. I know we had a detective that could rip a phone book in half. And yeah. There were times when, you know, that. It's impressive, you know, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The, the uses outside of an interrogation are, are minimal as far yeah. as I know, right. but, um, but as far as you know, beating someone with one or doing something like that, it's a waste of time because you can't trust any of the information. Yeah, that's sure. Right. Right. Okay. You know, and you actually brought up a great point as far as you went at this guy over and, and over, over and, and over. over. And you had the, there's a gift of time. It, it, there is, that, yeah. That, you know, when you have a guy yeah. in custody, yeah. you have 48 right. hours. You really do, yeah. To either prove you have enough to mm. keep him or you have to let him go. Yeah. So you're you know, working against the clock to yeah. build that trust and rapport with him. And, and you that's, have to let yeah. him sleep. And you have to let him eat. You can't. Yeah. You can't keep him up for 37 hours straight. Yeah. Because once again, you can't trust the information you're getting. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's a it's a very finely choreographed dance. Yeah. And it, it, my ears kind of pricked up when you, you said that you just kept going at him oh, and at him yeah. because eventually you'll find you'll find that key and you get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really it's cool. True, yeah. You have to build that trust and rapport, like you said, like get to yeah. know them, ask them their family, <laughs> and it's so important because if you can gain their trust like that and have a mutual respect, it makes the biggest difference. Like it, with every offender I work with, you know, if they really trust you, I always say to somebody, are you going to give information to an acquaintance or like a friend? Some, like, you know, you know, somebody you trust is who you're going to give the information to. Yeah. Um, so when you, okay, you, you're out there with the metal detector mm -hmm. and it's hitting. Um, did you guys do like the, the ground x-ray or anything? No, because I... That, how did you leave? That would drive... Oh, it was horrible. And I was, I was there. Right did you mark it with a GPS thing? I know something? the exact... Like, we went, it went over the mountains, so I know the mountains now, like the back so of my So if you hand. get killed, we'll never know yeah. where it is. No, no there's she, maps. She I put a bunch of leaves and stuff there. So. Oh, leaves, yeah, little twigs. <laughs> yeah. Her sister was with me, actually. It was me and Ouch. her sister. Oh, oh, wow. Mm. Oh my god, so we went and I rented the metal detector and the sisters with me and it, I was trying so hard. It was, it's so darkly funny, but we went to and I we were met, uh, renting it and the guy goes, what, why do you guys need a metal detector? Mm. And I'm like, oh my god. And I have like, it's such a, gold. He, yeah. <laughs> no, she says right to him, it's from my sister. And he was like, it's just like so straight faced. It even made it more funnier and like kind of awkward. Right. And they're like, Haha. no, really. And she's like, my sister's up in the mountains with an ice pick in her skull. <laughs> and the guy's just like, they had no idea like what to say and do. And like, I had asked for batteries right before the extra batteries. And he's like, no charge. And it's just like, we just left and went. And um, yeah, so her and I were like ecstatic, like freaking out. We're like, oh my God. And um, you know, for us, it's like, it wasn't proof, but it's like, we did the whole road. It's this one area he said, so her and I were like, this is, we're onto something. This could like really be, she could be right here. And um, so, but it was so hard to walk away because you do, you want to, but I'm like, I, I'm so scared of, you know, uh, destroying the remains or something that could possibly be there. You know, I want to bring a professional forensic expert on who can do that. 
Um, but yeah, that was, it's tough. It's tough. And now I'm living in Los Angeles, like I'm only an hour from the mountains. Yeah. And like every day I like think about going up there and it's like, but what can I do without the expert? But it's like, it, it drives me crazy. Just because they're right there. The girls are right there. So, okay. Oh, no, I was gonna add, were you working in conjunction with law enforcement or you totally Well, you no, I had talked to LAPD and I had talked to Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. Los Angeles Sheriff's Department had taken me up off to oh, cop off duty and shown me around and, um, you know, unfortunately, because of LAPD right now with the defunding of the police, homicides are triple in LA right now. A cold case unit is gone, sex crimes is gone, and missing persons about to go. So they have like no funding for anything. They're like, we're drowning in homicide. We can't help with a cold, you know, a case from 43 years ago that's technically closed on the California books. So pretty much they're like, we're so sorry, but we can't do anything. We're drowning too, and we have no funding. Mm -hmm. And I get it, you know, there's no resources for me or them, really, at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nationwide. We, we don't have a cold case in the right. world anymore either. Yeah, hey, it's sad. Good to have a Saturday, buddy. Hey, Mitch. Hi. <laughs> Pull up a chair, Mitch. Yeah. I can scoot over. Sit right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, the, my only option, my only two options are and, um, to either um, fund, sell fundraise, but then if I sell fundraise, I, I don't know if I could get every expert on and you know all the you know the permits for the mountains. We need permits. You know it's a national forest too. So um, you know I have to do all that myself, and I have no idea how to do all that too. So I was like, you know what? If I go to Hollywood and do it, have them film it. You know they take care of all of that, and they find the experts. They find the specialized cadaver dogs, you need the skeletalized cadaver dogs, you know, the metal detectors, the manpower, and they fund it, and then they get the permits. So, um, and I was, I didn't know if we were gonna get it done, and um, so I just signed a contract the day before I came here, and I was like shaking. It was like, yeah, I guess the day before, yeah. I was shaking when I got it, because it was like, now we actually, there's a hope, there's like a, a light at the end of the tunnel, like finally. So what's the time frame? When uh, when did he kill these people? When did uh, she? 1979. 1979. Yeah. Though. And how many people are still missing that they think that you're well, responsible for? He in the police discovery. So he gave me the police discovery. There's mentions of over 20 girls' names, and mm. one of the witnesses uh, actually said that she heard a tape of 12 different girls screaming. Now they're only convicted of five. Um, I found two missing girls that actually matched the uh, girls from the police report that were never investigated. Um, I think what happened was the DA just wanted to get, you know, the five, because Norris, his crime partner, yeah, yeah. admitted to it, and he was just like, okay, we got him investing to five, let's close it on the books. So no one's gone back and looked at this case, if, if there are more possible murders, and I actually think if we do a search of those mountains, there could be a body farm in that, like, canyon, because I think they were just throwing them. Yeah. Did they live in that area, or was Yeah, it yeah. They, um, Fittica was in Burbank, and Roy was living in Redondo Beach. So they knew the area very well. Very well. And so he was sent to youth authority for like juvie. So they sent them up in the mountains, like the kids, to uh, uh, fight fires. That was like part of their juvie. Because of that, he learned the fire roads in the mountains. That's how he knew these mountains, like the back of his hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did he ever tell you the first one and how it started? He did tell me he was his first kill, which um, when I released was we saying as well said, I uh, was at 18 and he shot a guy. Actually, and it, he's, he said it was an accident. It was a robbery, and, and the gun went off and shot him. But I don't believe that for a second. Yeah, that it was an accident. What kind of criminal history did he have? Oh, extensive. You know, but what's weird is he didn't have any violent or uh, sexual offenses. Like, he would get um, in trouble for grand theft auto and, you know, robbery and that kind of stuff. But it was like he could get away with the violent and sexual crimes. Did he. So what's weird is he was actually getting fired for jobs for like, you know, sexual um, misconduct and behavior, but it wasn't on a police report or criminal thing. So it went under the radar that he was a sexual deviant for years. Mm -hmm. Who was the worst out of the two? Oh, it's so hard to say. They both was were there a so, they say Bittaker was, but honestly, those two, they met in prison and they talked about their sexual fantasies, came up with this plan. That's for, how it started. Yeah, that's how it all started. And they would take pictures, of, it was a group of these sexual offenders in the prison. And so Baker and Norris actually took Polaroids of the girls, like tied up and stuff like that. And they mailed them to um, their friend Richard Schubert in prison. And um, back then you could mail like porn in. So like the, they didn't know if it was like just regular porn or what it was. And it, But no, it was the, them actually with the girls. And um, yeah, mailing it into their prison buddies to see. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So did they confess to all these, at least the five? Oh yeah, they confessed to the five, 
Yeah, and then I started digging into the more, and I had him on audio tape confessing to many more bodies other than that ones. Yeah, so that's what I told um, the production company. I go, if we do a search up there, be ready because I think it could be a body farm in this canyon. Yeah. Are they in death row? Yeah, well, Bideker got uh, the death penalty, so he went to death row, and then Norris uh, got life of. Uh, and he went to Donovan, which is in San Diego. So Why he, did he get the lesser? Because he was the one who popped first. Cooperated? Yeah, yeah. So he turned state witness against him. Yeah. They didn't have, they, they had no bodies when they arrested them. So they had no choice but to get one of them to go against each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because everyone's like, why did, how did Morris escape the death penalty? And I was like, that's why they didn't have the bodies. He was very, he was a very Hannibal Lecter. He was a proficient serial killer. He knew how to get rid of the bodies. And without detection, they didn't even put the crimes together. These girls were going missing at Hermosa Redondo Beach, right next to each other, safe communities. The police were not even putting them together. That these girls, there was a serial killer like, taking all these girls. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So why did you pick on this to start? Why did you pick the toolbox murders? You know, <laughs> when I was in college, I read about them in a textbook, and I remember hearing about the torture and the eyes picked the ears, and I dropped the book. I remember it was the first time I read about a serial killer dropping the book and being like. Are, I remember saying, like, in my head, like, are they even human? Like, it's, like, demonic, almost. Right. Yeah. Right. And then... Um, There's a part of that. Right? And then I met them um, when I was starting to interview for the study. So I was 26 when I met both of them. And um, so I didn't really pick this case. I feel like I would say the serial... You don't pick the serial killer, the serial killer picks you. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I was in there and he gave up the bodies, I was like, that's when you know they picked you, you know, to get this information to. I really, yeah. What was your pitch? Yeah. What was my pitch? Yeah, how did they? Did you say you're making a movie out of them? What? I mean, how did you no, get it? How did you get it? Oh, it, initially when I was 26? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they had students, you know, write and talk to them and everything. Like, right, but, Yeah, yeah. So they were open from the beginning. Yeah. They didn't say, no, we're not talking to you. We don't want to They could. They could easily say yeah. that. And they don't have to. If I, I could fly to St. Quentin, and I, at the time I was living in Massachusetts, so 3,000 miles I was flying out, I could get there, go into the prison that day, and they could. The, Correction officer can go in the cell and say you have visit, and they can say no, nope, and refuse it. Yeah. yeah, it's always a gamble, you know. They've always come down though, thankfully. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's because yeah. you were a young female? They no, like I said, Bittaker and I hated each other for three years. He never even sent me a visiting form. Um, I had to finagle it from his. Douglas Clark, who's another serial killer, who was his best friend in the prison, got a, a visiting form with his signature oh. and like yeah, finagled it for me. And I just filled it out, and then got approved for him. And then I was like, I was nervous because I was like, he's not going to come down. He didn't send me this. And then I just see him walking down, and I was like, oh my god, he came down. Wow. Yeah. But then it was, yeah, three years, just, we did not get along. How so did you introduce yourself? I just said, hey, I'm Laura, you know, I'm working on this study. I have a friend in psychology degree. Um, do you want to be part of it? Like, pretty much, oh. yeah, straight up. Do you want to be part of the study? And I'm mm -hmm. asking questions. You know, if they can tell me to go fuck myself, it's right. fine. Yeah, I'll go to another one. <laughs> Yeah. What was your impression of him when he first first met? Whitaker was like, idea? you know, he's like this little scrawny old man when I saw him. Um, but he, you know, he was painfully shy, and he wouldn't look at me for the first two hours. Like he wouldn't look at me in the eyes. Like he looked down. And I remember because he looked up, and like I, I go, oh, you really blue eyes. Like it, it startled me. Like because I finally saw his eyes, and they were really blue. And I was so I remember him having his head down for like two straight hours. Yeah. He was like, it was weird. But then finally, when he looked up and looked at me, like. He had, he always like had eye contact from the time. Yeah. What kind of dress would you wear? I mean, how would you present yourself? In oh, every picture. Did you oh, wear suit. perfume? And I mean, I always wear perfume. Okay. Yeah, but um, I, this is. Did, uh, did he ever compliment you? Yeah, like he um, he would always say you look nice. Well, I always go in suit up and everything. You know, I always say this suit up <laughs> when I'm going <laughs> to prison. Um, but you can see this is a picture of us going over the maps. Actually, you can just pass it around. That was actually taken three weeks before he died. He, is, he had cancer. You can see it looks oh, like a skeleton. Yeah. Can you look through other photos? <laughs> Not from last night. <laughs> we were here last night. <laughs> So speaking about last night, you took the Cream City Cannibal oh, Tour with God, Brittany. Yeah. So yes. uh, Brittany is, does a fine job as a, uh, as a host on that. Um, did anything come up or resound with you from just walking the streets here last night? Oh, it was awesome. And, you know, I learned so much about the Dahmer case I had mm -hmm. no idea about. Like, every stop you took me to, I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, like, the whole time. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it was, um, I learned a lot about his childhood. Like, his father teaching about burning the flesh or taking the flesh off, I had no idea he had learned that from his father before. 
so that actually explains why he was so advanced, you know, yeah. with that stuff. And his father, that was the way that they bonded, too. Oh. Well, taxidermy as well, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so but him, as far as eating flesh, how did that come about? Have you read anything further on that? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, his father, however, did have fantasies. He had the sexual deviance mm -hmm. fantasies. He had fantasies of murder and rape. He just never acted on them. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know... To your knowledge. To my knowledge. Yeah. I am not right. an expert. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I, I still have a bite mark in one eye. I took his fingerprints. <laughs> he bit me somewhere on here. Yeah, it's all you yeah. No, he really bit you? Yeah. Oh, of course not. Is it all a little salty? Make, well, make, make a note of that, yeah. <laughs> well, there are so many other bite marks that right. are yeah. right. yeah. right. 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 going to sign it when I was in pencil. So. <laughs> Notice he does himself, right? Yeah, right. right. Mm. That, is a, well. that is a paraphilia, people who self cannibalize. It's really? a real thing, yeah. I did not know. Come on. Yeah, I know. Yeah, self cannibalism. Wow, I'm yeah. across that. Mm. <laughs> Lovely. Hopefully you won't. Yeah. <laughs> so what body parts were Dahmer eating? I don't know. Like, was he eating like a lot of different parts of the body? Or was I think biceps were the thing he went for the most, <laughs> if not mistaken about that. Yeah. Yes, because he was attracted to the biceps. Mm. He loved the biceps. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you're pretty safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today, perhaps we all are. <laughs> so, one other thing about Dahmer that, from my research, is that he uh, obviously is known for killing and cannibalizing, dismembering men. Mm -hmm. But he would also go to Ricky's, the strip club that was uh, two blocks away from his apartment, the Oxford. That's my old beat. I didn't know that. And he would be there often at night, often intoxicated, and they'd boot him out. But he was there to pick up almost anybody he could at a certain point. He just had a score with something. Mm. Yeah. Well, you, he came in here. You knew him, or you... Let, let's not say I knew him. Well, he, yeah, okay. He, he came here for gin and tonics. And yeah. the, one of the things that really struck us as being unusual with him is that we, as you've seen, we have virtually all women that work here. That's our thing at Shakers. And um, he would not allow the female bartenders or the waitresses to get him his cocktail. A simple gin and tonic. Right. So either myself or another cook would have to come out of the kitchen to make his gin and tonic. There's no conversation going on. But he had these eyes. I'll never forget the eyes. They're just born to you like gimlets. I had no idea. We had no idea that who he was. Didn't announce himself. I'm a serial killer. <laughs> Until uh, the day that he was captured, which I think was the 21st of July, I got a phone call at 7 in the morning from the Bureau, the FBI, that called me to ask me to open up early. And I did. And I was thinking, we open at noon, I'll be here at 10 o'clock for them. And they're like, how about now? Oh, wow. Sure. So I drove down and I met them. So a couple of guys in your department were here. The DA's office was here. Somebody from DOJ, why ever, and, and an agent was here. And they had two members of the Milwaukee Press that was here. And what they wanted to do was to give the story to the local media before all the nationals converged on Milwaukee. As I'm groggily eyed behind the bar, they're passing around his mugshot, and I'm like, I know this guy. And that's, that's how we put that together. So. Now, that was interesting about the chair that you were telling me. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So it was lower. Right. No, this is there's a spacer. So we had this the same style of bar stools at the front and the back bars. And this one, for whatever reason, was put together, had a spacer maybe three quarters of an inch in it that was just a little bit taller. Yeah. That's the one that he would gravitate towards and he had to sit in that one as he just kind of surveyed the, the domain or something. So he sounded so particular. Like I mean this chair and only a man can serve me my gin and tonic. That's, yeah. 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 Well, he didn't he necessarily didn't like women, right? Yeah. Because his object of desire mm -hmm. was a man. Mm -hmm. Well, and he had a really difficult relationship with his mother, mother. too. Mm -hmm. She favored his younger brother, and she fully neglected him. Mm -hmm. He had a really close relationship with the father. I saw like the interviews. With him. Yes. Oh my God, it's creepy. Is it Stone Phillips? Where uh, his father yes. Lionel was like stroking his arm the entire yeah, time, and like, ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah. But I never saw the Just mother like, like um, in any interviews or anything like. at tr mm. the trial. Did she even come to the trial? The mother? I think she was heavily medicated then, wasn't she? I mean, was she, she was she was off. Yeah. And I saw a different interview with her, but she was bonkers. Really. So I'm not sure yeah. you'd want her at your trial. Yeah, yeah. she was always very heavily medicated. Uh, she was so depressed that at one point she was taking 20 pills a day just to wow deal with it. Yes, yes. yes. She was also an extreme hypochondriac too. So any little ailment that she had was the end of the world. Wow. 
It's hmm. interesting uh, how you said, I hadn't heard that the father actually had some sexual type of... Uh, yeah, yeah. And it makes you wonder how... If it's genetics, if it could be... Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or if it's he was different. even assaulted when he was a kid, or, right? I mean, right, really. Right, absolutely. That is interesting. I didn't know that either about the father. You know, and I think it's great he admitted that for like research purposes. Absolutely. Because I don't think a lot of fathers of serial killers would even come out and say that, if, even if it was true. Right. You know? Right. Did yeah. he express guilt then or at some point? Or is it just being matter of fact? I think it was just very matter of fact. Wow. If you have a chance at some point, watch the Stone Phillips interview. It It is creepy. It's yes. creepy, yes. It, it's not just the physical touch, just the way Lionel, his father, yeah. was just looking at the camera, responding to the questions. It, it's yeah. unusual. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just trying to picture if huh. it was me and my old man and I were doing that interview, it would be, you know, he'd be stroking my larynx with his. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ab start my neck. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm getting so much pleasure out of this. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other nice thing about you taking this tour last night, and you yeah. went the 8 o'clock tour, right, mm -hmm. is that it was dark. It was. And you are walking in the exact same, you know, patterns that Dahmer did, where yeah. he used to hang out, how he'd watch for his victims at the different gay clubs that used to be down here. And that by itself just sets a different tone to that. Because we do this as a matinee as well. It's just yeah. not the same tour. I was glad we had the 8 o'clock because it was yeah. dark. And I said to her when we were walking, like, I can't believe, like, Dahmer walked in these spots, yes. like, down the street. Like, you mm -hmm. think a serial killer is trolling mm -hmm. down here. Like, hits you differently when you're yeah. Like, doing yeah. yeah, you're on the sidewalk that he walked. Yeah. And went for victims. Like, yeah. it, it hits you when you're there walking. Well, again, there were, there were all these gay bars yeah. on, on both sides of us, right? We're the bastion of not gayness. But, um, what else do I say? So that was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, there was a reason for all these gay bars to be there because society had a real diminished viewpoint of them. Yeah. So they'd all be in their clubs together where they weren't getting hassled or something else, right? right. right. So today, it's, I, I don't think there's any validity to it, mm. honestly, because look at how many people at City Hall are gay and, and they you know, comport themselves on a daily basis with right. everything else. And not just there, but throughout all industries as well. No one cares anymore. Yeah, nobody. So, um, you know, I told her last night the first serial killer I ever saw on TV and like learned what a serial killer was was Dahmer, which yeah. is ironic. And yeah, yeah, it's kind of crazy. And I remember sneaking downstairs, seeing the news. My dad would watch the news, and I have a chapter in the book. And Joe read it, and it was um, yeah, it's me sneaking down and seeing Jeffrey Dahmer like at trial or getting arrested, yeah. and I was mm -hmm. and them saying serial killer. I was like, Dad, what's a serial killer? I was a little girl. He's like, someone kills multiple people, and I was like. What? Like people kill people? Like I didn't even understand the concept of murder. I was that young, and then serial killing on top of it. I was like, multiple people. Like why? And I kept saying, why, Dad? Why? I was like, and he was like, I don't know. Like I forget what answer he gave. He was just like, no one knows or something. And I was like, I want to find out why. And then I grew up to do that. So well, these, I still don't know the why. Those <laughs> toolbox so guys. Did they model themselves after anybody? Because there are serial killers that are going on. Also, yeah, there was yeah. so many say, in LA. They were like on top. What of did they have? Heroes? Did they have? Um, none that Vinegar Norris told me about. But they do study each other. Like a lot of serial right. killers get caught, and they go so find the books of like yeah. true crime books and other serial killers like in their house and stuff. So they do really like um, study each other. Oh yeah. yeah. So are you concerned that when you're doing the series or writing books about this, that somebody's going to pick that up and say, "Yeah, you know, I got some spare time. Maybe I could do that. I got tools." Um, I won't make those mistakes. Like a copycat, you mean? Like a copycat. Okay, so the Andrea's family, okay. um, her one sister who is in the show and came up to the mountains with me, I spoke with their other sisters and they don't want their names mentioned. And I'm taking, you know, I'm not mentioning any names mm -hmm. uh, because that's their concern is mm -hmm. copycats. Um, you know, they're very rare, but I understand, like, you know, it is possible. Somebody could pick that up and be like, I can take tools and, like, just be, you know, get a van and do what they do. It does mm -hmm. happen. There actually was already one copycat of Vinegar and Morris, and it was in the Midwest, actually. Really? I'd have to look up what, it was in the Midwest. Yeah. Well, there was another serial killer in LA that was using a van also at that time. Yeah, Bonin, that was, um, Vinegar was very close with him. Really? Sexually, See? and yeah. Huh. Really, yeah. So, I have some tea on serial killers in the same way. So he did mention that to you? Yeah. He went through yeah. That. okay. Mm -hmm. And was he caught at the time? Yes. Or was he still out? Uh, Let's see, it was it was Bitter, Bonin, and Clark. That was Clark the Sunset Slayer. The three of them were like all act at the same time and they were all caught around the same time. So they were all in county together and then they were all at the same point together. It was like they grew up together. <laughs> like wow. they went from county to the same point together, yeah. Yeah. 
which is wild. But I mean, they were like, and those were just three. I mean, there was so many more. Did any of those guys tell on each other, the law enforcement? No, they didn't snitch each other out, basically. But there were like inmate informants in the county jail that did testify against all of them. Uh, there was one informant um, who I've spoken with because he testified against Vinegar and Bonham. Yeah. Did they ever talk about what their, what their like, sexual or serial killer community was like in prison? Sounds like they were hanging out together. They do. I mean, when they're together in prison, they're, they, that's who they, Are you, you know. swapping holes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Oh, my. Um, just you know, taking they, trophies and war stories. Right. Exactly. Well, it's, trophies. Yeah. Yeah. Going to college, right? Right. In so many ways. It is. Yeah. They, well, hmm. they call, like they do, they stick together because, you know, they're not respected in the prison because there's like gang bangers and other stuff. And a lot of them kill, you know, teenagers and stuff. Right. So they're looked at as like the pedophiles and stuff. They, you know, and those are the ones they target to go after. So, you know, they, they actually do, they stick together. Like um, on the yard and like, yeah. Because, you know, they're, you know, sticking together so they don't get killed, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, just like Dahmer, of course, he's there with uh, Jesse Anderson, mm -hmm. right? And Scarborough killed them both in the same afternoon, so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. yeah, St. Quentin is, um, California is the biggest uh, serial killing case. I think actually Alaska just recently beat it out, if I'm not mistaken. But I mean, St. Quentin is just filled with them, like so many different serial killers. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. California and LA, especially. You know, like in LA, people are, you know, moving for Hollywood, everyone's from out of state. So it's a transient, like, kind of um, environment in LA, and it's the perfect hunting ground for these guys. Hmm. For sure, it's like vulnerable people coming out here. Yes. They're so hopeful. They're coming from the Midwest or smaller areas. Yes. Right. I mean, I just moved there a month ago, and it was yeah. nerve wracking for me because I don't have family out there. I have three friends total. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, it's scary when you move, you know, 3,000 miles. And you have to get the place in a car, you don't know anybody. Well, you're not telling Bitteker and some other. Yeah, it's your friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling them. Like, I guess if I count the serial killers, I have a lot of friends over there. <laughs> so popular. Yeah, very popular. And it, ironically, I'm actually now living in their hunting ground. Which oh, is kind of crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you set yourself up, aren't you? No. <laughs> it's actually the safest part of LA. That's why I fix it. <laughs> sure. And yeah. lightning doesn't strike twice. Yeah. Of course <laughs> not. Yeah. So if you had any huh. of these other serial killers in the prison reach out to you wanting to share their stories or make them famous? You know, now with the TV show, I'm starting to get like a uh, couple you. couple requests. Yeah. Like they want to talk. And, um, you know, I'm careful about that because I don't want to give them infamy or notoriety at all. Mm -hmm. Like I, yeah. you know, I'm here for, to, for right. research and study and to find out missing victims and stuff. I'm not here to, you know, you're not going to come up off of me. If this isn't about TV shows and shit. The only reason I, I did the TV show was to get these girls recognized on TV and to right. get, you know, um, a search done. You know, that's right. my whole purpose. I turned down the toolbox killer four times because um, they didn't want to fund the search. And I was like, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. Turned down, they kept on. Um, they put me on the phone uh, with the head of NBC <laughs> to try to convince me to get to wow. do the show. I kept turning it down. They're like, why? We're giving you a TV show. I was like, I don't care. I want the girls found. This is not about money. This is not about fame for me at all. So um, my attorney called me. She's like, I think you should do it. You know, get the recognition out there. Get their names out there. Do this like one-off. You know, the two-hour special. Yeah. Get them out there. Then we're gonna do a series where they get them found. And I was like, okay, that's why I signed on eventually. Okay. But yeah. But you're gonna start getting bombarded with these phone calls, right? Probably. Gonna, okay. And then how are you gonna determine which is bullshit, which aren't? Oh well, just interviewing them. But okay. you know, I'm very skeptical of the ones that do reach out and like want to talk now because right. I'm mm -hmm. on TV and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, you have to be careful on them. I'm pretty. I'm going to tell like all of them. You know, this isn't. I'm not going to put you on camera. You're not going to be sensationalized. You know, this is not how it's going to work. You know, you can you can answer my questionnaire and help with the studies and stuff, and mm -hmm. I'll submit it. But even in the study, we have offender one, offender two. We don't even give them a name in the study because we don't want to even give them infamy right. mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. yeah. We list the ones that are dead. Uh, Roy Norris is part of the study. Uh, Bideker couldn't answer any of the questions. They were too uh, deep for him. He like literally could not answer. Wow. Uh, but Norris is in it. Uh, who else died? Philip Jablonski is in it. He's another one out of San Quentin. Um, Gregory Miley, who is Bonin's uh, accomplice, he's mm -hmm. in the study. Um, Bonin was dead when I went into San Quentin okay. and started interviewing. Um, and who was the other one that died? Oh, uh, Robert Bobby Long. He was down in Florida. Yeah. So they've all died right after they completed the study. And um, I well, watched them. And you want to get this study? <laughs> <laughs> we were actually talking, John and I, uh, Dr. White, who I'm doing this analyzing study with, and I said, I want to have normal people answer these questions too, and then I want to do homicide detectives or law enforcement, because I think law enforcement detectives or PIs 
would actually uh, be similar to the serial killers. Well, let's have a little fun. Why don't you ask each of these uh, young men a question? Oh. <laughs> well, how come you looked at him over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know, <laughs> there was a question, and I almost took it out of, of the questionnaire, and I'm so glad I left it in. It was like my sleeper cell question. It was the one question where, like, the... You know what? I'm going to reserve. I'm going to stop what I'm saying because I'm going to, you guys answer it first and I'll tell you. All right, so the question is, if you could wear an invisibility cloak, what would you do? <laughs> That's a loaded question. It is a loaded question. Hell, I don't even think in those terms. Is that real? Not that, yeah, this is why it was like, you got to yeah. think about it. It's a deep questions. I mean, as a teenage boy, I might be able to answer that. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. You'd be visiting all the changing rooms. Right. <laughs> See, this is the questions make them dig deep and really start to think. Right. And this is where their thought process and behaviors start to come out. You know, think of like eighty questions like that that dig deep into their, you know, thought process and behaviors. None of them are answered because I think they're scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not scary. It's just yeah. you know. See, our mind, the way we think of it is totally different because yeah. Yeah. we're all yeah. facts. You know, real yeah. stuff. When you yeah. pull up something like, if you're invisible, what would you do? What would you do? Yeah. Think about it. I mean, I've never thought that would believe, but I, I mean, want to say I don't want. I wouldn't let do that. Yeah, that is that you have facts. Yeah, yeah. I, see, but that shows his personality and facts. Yes. Like, yeah. So Absolutely. it reveals even like I can't answer it because it's facts. Yeah. Sure. I'm pretty sure if you had one, at some point, I'd be walking in my living room and also the boom. What was that? I can't get around it. Well, that's a good. That's a ghost. I'm pretty sure on some nights you think you actually are invisible. <laughs> like right now. Right now. That was savage. <laughs> oh my god. What's another question? I want Bob to answer that question. Yeah. Oh. Bob's not going to. Why? Oh. <laughs> So, oh, with a lot of them who answered the question, mm -hmm. um, their sexual deviancy came out, obviously. And um, I have one offender, it was Jablonski, I can say his name now that he's dead. Um, he said, I would go into a house, I would rape the children, and murder everybody. That's the mind. And he said that. He said that straight out in the answer. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And he no wasn't, hesitation. He wasn't, he wasn't the only one who said he would rape and murder. Really? Yeah. Like, it was this sleeper cell question that brought out the sexual deviancy. It did. And the other surprising answer, I must say, which I was not expecting, is a lot of them said they would go into government buildings, like CIA, Pentagon, whatever. They would go inside, like, government and steal, like, government files, which I thought was kind of... That's I didn't expect that one. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Government secrets. Mm -hmm. You'd be a very good political aid for somebody. Yeah. 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 I wasn't expecting that one, but the sexual deviancy, I was kind i was kind of expecting that to come out. I'm sure. How would yeah. you answer that question? Oh, I would, I would uh, fuck with people and pretend I was a ghost and, you know, mess with people. Naturally. Yeah, naturally. <laughs> <That's funny>. yeah. <laughs> Ghosts are real. I know, but I would like, I'd, I'd be in shakers just messing with people. <laughs> Enhance their experience. I would do yeah. friends. I would be doing yeah. friends. I'd have fun with it. Would yeah. you like so my I'd cigar? Be. Yeah. <laughs> Probably make a lot of money. <laughs> 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 oh god. Probably the same. The same. Just like kind of spook people. Yeah. People that I don't like scare a little bit more. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Throw a chair across the room. What other questions? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so that one went so well. Ask him. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can tell when we're, we're, oh, we're well, not going to answer a question. We well, this, was yeah. a, this one I, I made just because they are serial killers. I said, you know, besides titles that others have given you, which is they're labeled as serial killers. So I'm saying beyond that, who are you? Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's that really a question. Good. Yeah. I was. I got a lot of profound answers, some really interesting answers with that. Um, yeah. And you would have said, I'm proud to be a father or anything like that? Yeah, there were some. Yeah, okay. like, I'm a father. Okay. Some were like, I, I am a loving, kind person. And it's like, so yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 And then there were some, it's like, very... Yeah. Or when I get tickled. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> there were some, like, dark answers to that. Like, I am nothing. I've, what I was. I've, I've, I've never been anything. I, I am nothing now. Like, wow. there were some really deep dark ones too and then they were yeah it was that that was a really loaded one it was a mix of responses from everybody mm -hmm. have you ever asked a question to these people and you can see actually their face change or distort something else when that 
I've had, resonates with them. You know, I've had I've had seen Bitteker and Norris both go into their serial killer mode, like oh. their anger mode. Like I saw it. Like you do see that glimpse of like that beast inside. Yeah, it's like it is freaky. It is scary. Like when you see it. Um, what triggered them? Uh, well, this is so weird because Bitteker gave me the police discovery, and he knew like I grew up on Nancy Drew, and I was gonna get you know Nancy took the whole case, and I'm trying to be a PI right now, so he knew I was gonna dig and dig and dig into this case. So of course I started tracking down everybody in the case, and then I find you know the cellmates that were in the county jail. And I was on the phone, and <clears throat> he just um, barked, and like this rage came out. Mm-hmm. And um, I had it recorded, and I sent it. My friend had heard it, and she called me, and I didn't even catch this when he was like barked at me. Um, and she was Laura. Like, he was chilling about when he barked at me like that. He said, "Girl," and if you listen to the let. Lynette, call Ledford your name. Tape. No, there's transcripts of the Ledford tape. So the last victim, there was one audio tape recovered, and it's now in the FBI. Um, the lead detective killed himself over this tape. They don't re- release it to the public. It's that damaging um, psychologically. Wow. And um, yeah, it's it's caused PTSD. Uh, Kay had to go on antidepressants. That's the prosecutor from the tape. But the transcripts are available online, and you hear him say, "Girl, roll over." Like he's like, "Girl," like a lot. So when he barked at me, he was like, girl, like, say, it, and my friend caught it, just like in the leopard tape. Yeah. So you, know, you got the wow. demon to manifest. Yes, I did. And then I got it to manifest in Norris. Um, and Norris was, um, because I told him, I go, Bittaker gave up the bodies, the police discovery, and, um, you know, everything, and where the buried evidence is. So I'm going to write a book about this. And I think uh, the production company had first contacted me, and I was like, and they want to do a show. And he was coming up for parole. And in his mind, he was getting out. This, he was totally getting out, and he didn't want any attention brought to the case, so that's when his came out. Then. Yeah. And I remember it like it was yesterday, because he goes, um, he says to me, he goes, well, I don't consent. And I said, well, neither did your victims. <laughs> and I, it, I never lose my cool like that. It was the one and only time, really, I ever lost my cool and said something like, right back at them, like really nasty. Yeah. Back. But it was because he were, used the word consent. It like... It was like, he nails it, just like, I, I jumped back at him. Yeah. Because well, don't you dare use the word consent. Like, it just... Yeah. Why do you get that privilege? You don't get that privilege. Yeah, exactly. What was his reaction? Like, yeah, he, no, he, then it just turned into an argument from there. Yeah. Yeah, and that was the last time I spoke to him, because, you know, he didn't want us, you know, going further with the show and the book. He didn't want anything out in public. He, he, wants, he did have the parole hearing. Uh, shocker. Uh, he did not get it. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah. And but he died um, like two months after Bitteker. And I say in the show, it's weird. Like people call them like soulmates and stuff. And it's weird they do. They died like an old married couple together. It was so weird. And I found an old letter from Bitteker and Norris. They wrote to each other even after the trial, after he turned the state witness. They were still communicating. And Norris said to Bitteker in one of the letters, he goes, "When you die, I'm gonna die." And he, yeah, isn't that weird? So you think that there was maybe like a love. There was definitely like a sick love, yeah. There. Well, so, here, here's one bit of advice: like when you're talking to law enforcement and all this, don't mention you like Nancy Drew. Yeah. Why? <laughs> no. Yeah. Nancy you're Drew. gonna get yeah, like all of us. We just look there like yeah. What's wrong? I love Nancy Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I actually yes. did not. Trust, don't do it. You'll lose all credibility. Well, it's fiction, what? first yeah. of all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a little girl I read it. I, <laughs> I understand. You just say you're interested in investigating. Yeah. yeah. Since you're a little girl. Since, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't mention it to you. Well, it's in the book. <laughs> 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 no, but that's the first chapter. Is, that's like, chef, Phil. I loved how she was a sleuth. Yeah. That's like what started it. And then I had the going downstairs right. to see Dahmer. And that's when I started wondering the why. And then it, by 12 and 13, my dad remembers me writing uh, pieces papers on paraphilia and Ed Gein. Like it, it started Ed very Gein. early, yeah. casual thing. That's another I was reading, one. Yeah, and I was reading um, uh, college forensic psychology textbooks already, like in middle school and high school wow. for criminology. Yeah. yeah, like it was my whole life. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot better answer. Yeah, well, yeah. that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it started with Nancy at like five, and then it just progressed into what it is today, and okay. here we are. <laughs> so, did you study Ed Gein? I did. I was really fascinated with this case, and actually, I went to his sites right before I came down here. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to ask you that if you want to play the field. Well, I just was at. A, I was just spoke at a homicide conference in Green Bay. Okay. So we did the homicide conference, um, and then we had like a day. So I was like, I want to go to play the field before I come down here. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we went, and it was I'm just going to ask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was cool. It was cool. We too. actually uh, we worked with the uh, attorney, state attorney general that prosecuted it. He worked with his son. Oh, 
time. And when Stu was alive, he could tell us a lot of stories. You know Stu? That. No. no. And he gave me a look like that. Like yeah. annoying look like that. Oh. oh, no. <laughs> Well, I was well he saying, wasn't technically a serial killer, though, was he? Well, technically, the Ray FBI Robert. has lowered it to two. It's no longer three. Okay. It but he only killed two. one person, right? No, he was confused. Wasn't he, gra he was robbing graves? And he was robbing graves, but he, there were two killings because they found the head two? of one okay. woman uh, that was uh, missing, and then they found the other one, you know, in the barn. Yeah. You know, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, so it was two, two confirmed, and, but they, I believe he killed his brother also. Mm -hmm. He was that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, and um, they believe he might have killed these two hunters that were missing, and he said mm -hmm. they were buried on the property, but the neighbor killed them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 And then that happens. Yeah. 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 But I mean, with the, it's how many bodies was in that house, they had no idea. Right. You, right. You would never know. Right. Yeah. Right. Actually, back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Laura, I know that you have a, a little thing for the paranormal as well. I do. So, when you were at, uh, you're in Plainfield and you're by the site of, of Gein, yeah. uh, did you sense anything? You no, know, I didn't really sense anything while I was there. Um, at the, I will say the Spirit Land Cemetery, where mm -hmm. he, will, he was digging up the bodies, is very creepy. Really? I would say there was there were definitely an energy there. Like, because you're like, this is where he came at night to, like, yeah, the graves out. But his farm has all been demolished, right? Yeah, it's just Do the gate. We went to the gate. I saw, oh, I saw the so they do have. The yeah. Okay. yeah. I thought because the town one and all that. It is. Yeah, the headstone is gone, and yeah. right. Yeah. 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 And the, he, the head, his headstone is not there. But there's a little indent because I guess they took. It, I read they uh, took the grave. Someone stole the tombstone mm -hmm. or something. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So people keep messing with the grave. Uh, but you can see. about his fair play, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Someone's wreck room. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Cocktail. Yeah. Right. yeah. Check out my lamp. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lovely wallet you have there. Right. Yeah. Wisconsin might have another serial killer that's operating now. Oh, wow. There's some thought to it. And there's college towns along the Mississippi River yeah. and oh, in yeah. Milwaukee that Smiley are getting face. pushed in the river. Oh, I know. So look for a guy with real big hands. Pushing these people. Really? They've had so many deaths in them here. They think that college kids are drunk, they fall in the river, but it's happening I know more often. Yeah. 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 So it happened in Boston, and one of my friends from high school uh, knew one of the victims. Really? Oh. And it was close to one of the victims. Yeah. And he, he's been begging me to look into this case yeah. um, because, you know, for justice for his friend. We had the Duke, the sheriff out there, his son could have been one of those. And I think we had one in Milwaukee. And then. Uh, and I by the PAC, or, right? Yeah, by yeah. the PAC. Yeah. 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 Stevens Point. Stevens Point, yes. Yeah, it's very strange because everyone's like, doesn't know what's going on in every city. It's yeah, the same it's, all it's all over the place. Right, it's Boston, there's Pittsburgh yeah. here, yeah. Like, yeah. and it's like, why is it popping? And it's like the same time frame, so it's, so one of the theories I've heard is it's um, on the dark web, like they're all like, to, Confuse law enforcement. Like it's multiple guys doing the same MO on two different cities. That's one theory um, that's been organized on the dark web. I don't know. If there's really truth to it, but I mean, it could make sense. I mean, I don't know how it's happening in all these different cities. Could be a victim precipitated. Yeah. Just high intoxication right. by a deadly body yeah. of water. Yeah. Got yeah. yeah. punched in it. Got yeah. punched in the yeah. yeah. and Backwards yeah. and into the water. Well, there's the so, all the that doesn't add the anything to our story. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is Wisconsin. Yeah. 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 Well, I, either way, they're, <laughs> they're just killed, though, right? They're just killed. They're not dismembered. They're not eaten. Yeah. They're just killed. Yeah. So that's not quite the same allure. Yeah, but, yeah. no, but there is. They, they're always found about a month later, and their bodies are like fresh in the water. So it's, there's theories that they're being held captive. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they don't have enough decomposition to be like after a month. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. You said you said you do presentations. What do you do? To law enforcement, what do you do? Are you the same kind of work? No, I'm I'm doing my PI work out in California. Okay. But you were just at a homicide conference, right? Yeah, I'm still a criminologist, so I do I still do the forensic psychology study and interviews and stuff. Um, but I PI a gum shoe, Ellen But I mean, is that what you talk about, or just no? Again? I no. This is I did my study at the homicide conference. I presented the study and okay. then I did a presentation on the Bitterford Morris case. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. 
And what kind of feedback did you get? Oh, really good. Yeah, they, awesome. I do presentations all the time. Okay. Yeah, so I've done CrimeCon. Um, I did Boston College, yeah. So CrimeCon? Yeah, there's a con. Like Comic-Con? Like Comic-Con for crime, yeah. Really? I just did that. Who goes to those? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Are there so I can tell you who Want to be easy? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's a um, middle-aged white woman. <laughs> that's the that's the demographic. No, I actually don't like to do the the public ones. I like to stay within the law enforcement and academic realms. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's because I like to be surrounded with professionals in the field, and you know, and then you know, meeting them and hearing them their stories, you know, and yeah. you know. I, I want your take on this because we've been doing the Cream City Cannibal tour for years. Mm -hmm. Um, and the vast majority of people that take that are female, 25 to 40 years old, college yeah. educated, and it just blows my mind that it's literally like 93% female. Why? Yeah, and that's the demographic for like true crime. Mm -hmm. It's starting to, I'm seeing a lot of males now. And it, yeah. but males are starting to like really get into this. I think it's really getting blowing up. But I mean, that's the victimology demographic. Mm -hmm. women. And I think women, you know, we want to feel safer, hypervision, learn how to protect Absolutely. ourselves. So there's kind of like a power in, you know, watching this and studying it too. Feeling safer, like you know mm -hmm. how to handle the situation, or at least you feel like you can. Absolutely. You know, it does. You're hypervigilant and stuff. Like I, you know, I carry a knife and I'm going to be carrying a gun, you know, and you start to like, you know, I don't ever um, go places alone that I shouldn't. Like you start doing little uh, nuances that you wouldn't do before. Yeah. 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 You feel more like comfortable. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You do. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. We had a woman at, um, I can't recall which of the big firms was here doing a documentary, but at one point, she's being interviewed, and she said, if Dahmer was alive, I'd want to date him. And I'm thinking, that's taking something to a completely different realm. Level. Yeah. 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 I, mean, yeah. I don't think she would be his type, actually. No, look, look, <laughs> but, but, I mean, look, look at the women that wrote... Well, you. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the women that wrote to Charles Manson, and to anybody else as yeah, well. Yeah. So yeah. they're not just yeah. pen pals. They want to get engaged. Some do. Some yeah. get married. And what nonsense is that about? Yeah. Just talking about Bundy. Yes. His wife, Bundy. Yeah, this morning and all the things, but also this trial. And yeah, Ramirez was another. I can't believe yeah. Ramirez, especially with the way he looked. Richard Ramirez? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, this, like, yeah. 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 he had this like devil aspect to yeah. him. Right. The bad boy. Thing. So what is that? The big teeth. Why do women the teeth? Yeah. I don't I do know. I don't know. You know, I wonder if it's because of the fame. They're chasing really more the, the uh. infamy. They want to be on TV or they want to be. Exactly. Also, it's and they're very much the. They want to fix that. You want to be the one oh, that fixes oh, that. Oh, that, that's more like, yeah, oh. something psychological. And yeah, yeah. Them, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can be the one that changes that. But the thing is, <laughs> no, okay. here's the thing. If you really want to fix somebody, go into psychology and get do a job in psychology. Yes. You know? Um, don't marry a serial killer. <laughs> get a degree. <laughs> like, go help people. For real. Words to live by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So should more women be investigators? I believe so. I think okay. females are incredible. We're, I mean, naturally, we dig through guys' Facebooks and social media, we have their phones. <laughs> I mean, that's just on a daily basis. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you a little stalking, it seems. Yeah, yeah. Some, some innate gifts that uh, uh, are yeah. just born with. Yes. Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> Intuitive. Intuitive, Intuitive yes. Yeah. yeah. Very. Very. And I mean, that's a superpower when you're doing it investigation. Is. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, women know how to talk to guys again to open up, right, and talk. That's the thing, is they open up more to women, too, yeah. I find, you know, they feel, I think they feel safer <laughs> with women. Yeah, I'm so, kind of I'm understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Talk I got a so torch anyway. Comfortable no cutter. Too. Just yeah, bite yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Some, like, there is a punch on the back. Exactly. Oh. Can, like, tune into well, like, look at yeah. that, Phil. Change. Sure, Look at that, Phil. Yeah, oh, there, 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 there you go. No. I never use a silly thing. Oh yeah, my god, yeah. look at that. Yeah. I think it's good with a male huh. female. Thank you. Um, I actually, for the new, um, this series I want to do, I actually it's have to bring on a, a male partner. I want, because I think, you know, that serves a purpose. Things, yeah. And women pick up on certain things. So it's kind of like a really good dichotomy, especially for investigations. Much more empathetic than that. Yeah. Well, our, our most successful MPD cold case team was male, female. Yeah, that's uh, they're, they're fun Because both of them were just, they yeah. bring so many different, different aspects. tools to the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you what know? goes over my head most of the time is like sexual stuff that guys pick up on that women might not, that we don't pick up on. Right. And like, they'll tell me stuff like that. Like, oh, you know, it's from a guy's mindset. Yeah. You know, and yep. that goes over a woman's head where, yeah, the same with me. 
intuitive stuff that's kind of like goes over the guy's head type of stuff. Yeah. So it's a perfect yin and yang experience when you're doing yeah. an investigation together. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. My uh, the guy who's training me, my boss out in California, he's um, male. But I like working with male and training other male. Same thing, you know. It's it's a really good dichotomy for the two. Does Milwaukee still have a cold case division? Technically, yes. Um, but I mean, I can't be, I can't speak as an expert. I'm not okay. employed there anymore. But um, from talking to the people that are, that I know, uh, they don't, um, mm. you know, there, there's just there's too many active new cases going yeah. on yeah. That, that you have to respond to. So, yeah. 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 Well, just getting overwhelmed. there's something else about the Dahmer case that really struck, I think, anybody that researched this is that he was in front of various courts time and again mm -hmm. and let off every time. Yeah. Slap on the hand, yeah. won't do that again, will you? Yeah. Whether that was indecent exposure, picking up kids, whatever else he was doing. And, and I got to imagine that it's not just in Milwaukee that took place. That's got to be pretty much everywhere that you've that seen. That's actually a big thing of Bitter and Morris is um, they kept getting out. And especially Morris, I mean, he was a serial rapist. He would get, you know... Um, so actually, Stephen Kay, who prosecuted this case, he actually convicted Norris three years prior on a violent rape of this woman walking home from uh, Redondo Pier, and he pushed her in the bushes, strangled her, and raped her. And so he actually prosecuted a case that got uh, Norris three years to life, right? He let him out right at Bruiser Park. And then when the detectives came to Kay and said, we have this guy, Roy Norris, he goes, I know that name. He goes, I haven't walked up. I've got three to life, so he's out, and he's killing people now. Yeah. So then, therefore, there's a significant problem taking place both with the prosecutors and the judicial system and whoever the parole board might be here makes those determinations, I'm guessing? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's flawed because you have these, you know, serial killers getting right back out and ser serial rapists, and then you have people locked up for 20 years for weed. So it's like there's no balance there, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like the ones that need to be locked up, you know, are getting out, and the ones who shouldn't be locked up are staying in. It's kind of, yeah, it's all messed up. What's your ultimate goal with this study? What do you, what do you hope to achieve? Well, just to aid to forensic examination for the psychologists to help weed out the manipulation. Like, that's why they're getting out, is because they're actually conning the psychiatrists sure. and at the prisons. That's how they're getting let out. So actually, that was my whole uh, basis for this. I'm like, why are these guys keep getting out? They're conning the psychologists. You know, so we can kind of weed that out and like get rid of like the manipulation part. So I said, how do I do that? I go, I give them, uh, I, we have to track their thought process and patterns, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't ask them yes or no questions. Like a lot of the questions they ask them are yes or no, and they know how to answer them. And I, so I said, why don't we take out all the right and wrong answers? There's no right or wrong answer to the questions I asked you, right? Yeah. It's how you think and believe. Mm -hmm. So they can't answer it wrong, which kind of actually trips them up now, because their real personality comes out. Like that question, they're, they're super self. Yeah. 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 yeah, you see, so they reveal themselves in these eating questions. You know, it, it, they do, and more so when they're being asked. You know, do you have any homicidal urges still? And they're like, nope. <laughs> you know, and but that is a question they do ask. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of surprising that that hasn't been done before. I mean, you would think that. Yeah, yeah. I call it the prom date syndrome. When like you know, someone's like a pretty girl, and they're like, oh, she's been asked that a million times, but nobody's asked her out. Right. You right. know, right. That, and so you think it's been done before, but it hasn't been done before. Yeah. That I made up that term, by the way. That's just me. That's very good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Good analogy. Yeah. Hmm. So, sociopath or psychopath? Are you asking me the difference? Well, no, I'm, I'm conversing with the, the lexicon, but in your mind, let's look at Bitteker, sociopath or psychopath? There is an argument now, and I have um, his psychological, psychological examinations, from, okay. uh, actually from 16 to uh, 78, till he died at 78. I have all, all three wow. years. So okay. I, yeah, well, I think you can be both, can't you? I, I would assume so. Yeah, because there's a lot of sociopaths that aren't serial killers. Clearly. Yeah, but if you got be, both, you probably are. You don't have to be a psychopath or a sociopath to be a serial killer. There's actually a lot that are right. either one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's like a big myth about serial killers. So just deviant? Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you call them? What are they? It's, it's not normal. 
it's not normal, no. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, what is it? It's, I want to say it's 60 to 70 percent are antisocial. Okay. I call it antisocial because antisocial blankets socio and psychopaths. Okay. Yeah, because they say sociopaths is nurture, like socio, you know, sociology, yeah. social, so it's a learned behavior. Why psychopaths is already like, mm -hmm. you know, genetics and it's, you know, a brain dysfunction, that kind of stuff, genetics. Um, I mean, that's debated in the field widely, um, but I do believe that's How the much does narcissism play in there? I mean, that's a uh, trait that's measured with both of those. Stop yeah. talking about me, Phil. Yeah. I'm right here. <laughs> We're trying to help you, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what this is. Yeah. This is a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Drinks for the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hmm. Yeah, so that's the big question, you know, nature versus nurture. You were yes. saying that last yeah, night, actually. Yeah, yeah. and Dahmer, actually. Yeah. Right. So what do you guys think about Dahmer? Do you think it was more nature or nurture for him? I mean, I think it's both, but I think it's more so the nurture. Yeah. yeah. Because his whole thing was abandonment. Or, or the lack thereof. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's what he... He did what he did. What he, did. he blames the fact that he did these things based off of his huge abandonment issues. Well, wasn't yeah. he trying to make sex zombies? Yes. Yes. No. yes. Yeah. So he'd keep them forever. They'd always right. be with him, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's also why he, you know, chose cannibalism, too, because he thought if he ate them, they would really stay with him. Mm -hmm. Of course, not understanding the GI system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I've heard that about cannibals, too, say that. Yeah. Like, they, they feel like they are always with them if they eat them. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's not a new concept. If you look at the Mayans as well, they would, as they, they were very warlike, and as they, they take over other tribes, other nations, they would take the best warriors and they would slay them, and then they would eat their heart or anything else. Yeah. Wanting that energy, that power to come with them. So, yeah. Maybe that's just part of our primal being. It's, well, there are like remote islands, I think, mm -hmm. that still do this with that. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. their social norm. It's not, it's our social norm, right? As you could say, but their norm, and they do this, so it's still practice in it, just like that. You know, you're mm -hmm. intaking them. It's disgusting. I mean, to me, to us, I guess. Right, yeah, right. I mean, yeah, it's still practice. You know, in some remote places. Mm -hmm. So, is there a correlation between these people that are serial killers and? Uh, forget the rape for just a moment and the other abuse, but are they also involved in in like? Robberies and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah, there'll be tons of crimes. But every time I look at a rap sheet, there's usually a ton of crimes. Okay. And you know, especially with the sexual offenses, just the keeping palms in the windows. Right. There'll always be little escalation. Screen cutters. Right. Yeah. Right. So this actually can help a lot of ways because if you're doing an investigation for someone who is, you know, not robbing banks necessarily, but something else, right. you've got other questions that like, perhaps you can now ask them as well that might lead you in right. a direction. But there's an ethical problem because just because they identify as a serial killer doesn't mean that you can stop them from doing that. They have to actually kill someone first before you can sure. get a case against sure. them, right? Sure. But do they stop doing robberies once they start doing the serial killing? Um, you know... No, I don't think so. For the vast majority I've seen, like the, so they'll, commit, they'll, they'll commit a ton of crimes. Yeah, during know? their spree. Yeah, yeah. So is there a progression, or is it? Um, there is a progression, but they. You know, you don't start commit. from okay. One day I yeah. wake up and I, I kill seven people right. and I start eating. Yeah. It's I, I'm peeping in windows. And right. I, you know, right. I, I turn invisible and I'm in women's locker yeah. room and then you know there's. A, Forget to wear pants one day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, you, yeah, when you want to... Hey, with legs like these, it's a sin for me to work. Well, <laughs> I've heard Phil say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. They'll still commit Let's other see. crimes. Uh, Vinegar Norris were uh, dealing drugs, massive amounts of drugs also, too. Yeah, they, as, when they did surveillance on him, he had these huge bay windows, and he was measuring out tons of weed right in front of these bay windows. And he was on parole during the time, yeah, so... <laughs> so weed doesn't make you smart. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the reason they call it dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> we used it to, you know, like burglaries. If we had a screen cutter burglary, we'd cut a yeah. screen to get it. And sometimes they would just take artist articles of clothing, those that you right. keep track of all those. First people you start looking at is who's been arrested for sexual assault in those areas. Right. Right. He's on parole in those areas. So, yeah, I can see how it starts that way. 
Yeah, it does, yeah. The serial rapist that I have to deal with, they, it's all you can always see the progression from yeah. the young age and how oh, it just yeah. starts out. Yep. Prostitution, city citations. Yeah. They'll, they'll always be like a stalking or something mm -hmm. you know, like that, and yeah. then it moves right along. Yeah. Yeah, in a Bitteker's uh, psych eval from 16 years old, I could see homicide written all over the psych eval. Uh, craving attention, wants to be somebody, like a porn. And I'm like, I mean, back then, of course, it was, it, to me it was like, that's Red flags. Like that. Red yeah. flags, yeah, mm -hmm. 16, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there were signs, like, through all of his psych evals. Like, wow. this, this was coming, yeah. Yeah. Deeply disturbed, deviant, sociopathic, yeah. Like, you could see it just escalating more and more in the psych evals. And again, he was getting right back out, too. Even, like, when he actually got out in 79, he actually got out right in 78, actually. And then Norris got out in January of 79. Um, but the psychologist actually said, do not let this man out. The burger. He's, he's violent. He's a ticking time bomb, but he still got out. Oh. Yeah, they still granted it. Have you worked with FBI profilers at all? I do, yeah. A couple of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, one of them uh, prepped me before my last interview with uh, Bitteker. So we, oh, wonderful. Yeah, he prepped me because I, I called him. Because I, I go to conferences with all of them, and I'm very close with okay. all of them. And um, so I called him and I said, he's dying. And he was like, let's get to work. And like we, um, yeah, spent. So they approved of your work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Good yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they were the first ones who did like the first collective study. I'm like the second person to do a big collective study. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I'm kind of like picking up like where they left off, I feel like. And, you That's know, great. yeah, it's cool. It is cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a new what, TV show, and I forgot what streaming service is. It's about how FBI profilers began. Yeah, Mindhunter. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mindhunter. Yeah. Ranger yeah. show. Yeah. Did it end? Yeah. yeah. I Pretty think they, might, they might bring it back. Yeah, I, I actually know some tea behind the scenes. I'll tell you off camera. You could be a consultant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, maybe. That'd be cool. Now that I'm in LA. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's fascinating. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. White, who's uh, analyzing the study, he actually worked with Jim Clemente, who's an FBI profiler, uh, but he painted a criminal mind. So they would go in the writer's room and they would tell the writers like about you know their cases and stuff, and the writers would turn it into criminal minds. Like wow. they did a show Criminal Minds, yeah. But that's one of my favorite shows too. Oh, yeah. absolutely. That's mm -hmm. yeah, cool. Yeah. But yeah, it took us a couple days to prep um, because you know it was actually what you guys experienced. You know, it's down to the wire. You have yeah. hours at that point, and you have to get everything. Yeah. So yeah, we prepped and prepped and prepped. Yeah, and it was really intense. So I know what you guys experienced at least a little bit with those like, last final hours. <laughs> right. Yeah. I have to ask, did you go to the funeral? There was a funeral. Okay. <laughs> For a cigarette? No, I'm just just. Manson had one. Manson had one. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's on YouTube. You can watch yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I guess. Um, no, there was no funeral. Well, I guess in the back, uh, he named me next to Kim, so I guess that was on me. <laughs> wow. Did you get a wow. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he told me I can go to Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and get like all the stuff on the case, and he said you'll get my toolbox. And I was like, oh my god. Oh. Ironically, he told me he was like, he carved LB in his tools, which is my initials. Which oh is my even gosh. creepier. That is yeah. creepy. Yeah. Probably better than this day now. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, yeah, I didn't throw him here. <laughs> well, you didn't get the van in Mexico. Oh, really? <laughs> Joe and I want to find it. Dinosaur attraction? <laughs> I have tracked yeah. it to Mexico, and then you know Mexico is they don't. It's, um, but listen, we can, I'm still going to try. I mean, but there's no like DMV like we have here. It's so right. hard to yeah, track. Yeah, watch your style as you go out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Murder Mac in Mexico. I have I have a lead that it's now being used as a chicken slaughter van. Like this guy <laughs> has the chickens in the back, and then he uses like yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's still a slaughter van. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Does yeah. it have personalized yeah. plates on it? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tools killer. No. Or it's driving to San Diego every day. Yeah. Right. Make, yeah. Making yeah. deliveries yeah. and yeah yeah. yeah. Okay. Sit alone, sure. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So he likes smoking cigars? He gave me one yesterday. Yes, Who's I he? did. Yeah. Oh, Bob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And? No, they're okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she survived, right? <laughs> You're not green? Yeah. 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 You didn't throw up, I hope. No, no, right. no. no. <laughs> I 
Yeah, not bad, actually. There you go. A lot of my friends actually smoke them. So. Like my guy friends. Are we uh, ready for tequila yet? Oh, are we gonna shot of tequila? We could. Okay. 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 This is my first time I've ever drank on camera, actually. Uh, would you mind getting us some of tequila? Yeah, absolutely. Probably Casamigo. Thank you. Yeah, Casamigo. Good choice. Mm. So, yeah. One last question as far as you find a, a good one. You, you hit the, the, the metal detector. Mm -hmm. And that was when? Uh, so that was it over the summer. Okay. That was in July. Of last year. Yeah, July of last year. Yeah. Okay. And nothing's been done since? No. No. Like I said, they, they have their 800 homicides yeah, for yeah. this year. And they know this is not a, yeah. you know, a, a I mean, sort of it's, calling out to yeah. LAPD or yeah. you know, any of that. It's, it's more of, you know, um, I understand the body's been there for a while yeah. or anything else, but they're not to well, freak another, out, but time is always of oh, the I essence. Know, I know. Um, well, not only that, too, Andrea's mother is still alive, but she's very old, like sick and old, and um, I keep saying it like I want to bring her home before her mother, because right. her mother, if you watch the show, her sister says, like her mother just want, wanted to bury her her whole life, and her other daughter um, had a son that drowned, and the mother said to her daughter, at least you got to bury him. I never got that. And like, that broke me when I heard that. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, 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 and she was the oldest. So how long, how long? I mean, how long has that body been? Let's see, 79, so it's 43. 43 years. 43. Yeah, and 20. the ice pick, it's he left it in the ice. It, it's so embedded, you'll see on the show how jammed it is. It's literally embedded in the skull. Yeah. Well, how do we know this since we don't have the body? We have the other one. The, okay. There was one, a skull recovered with the head, and deeply embedded. So we have an idea of exactly, okay. yeah, how, okay. how it is. Yeah. You've done your homework. Oh, yeah. I've done it. And again, I don't know much about forensics, you know, well, the psychology, criminology part, but I, I tried to, you know, brush up on forensics and yeah. learn this stuff. And I had to learn about, you know, the cat, cadaver dogs because I looked into a lot of stuff from penetrating radar, what we could use and stuff like that. How deep were they burying these people? They weren't burying them. They were just throwing them on the ground. Literally. Yeah, wow. I left them. Left them. Mm -hmm. No, it was mountains so like, no, and fire roads. Nobody goes right. on those fire roads except with oh, animals. fire. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And coyotes, I'm sure, had their yeah. way with yeah. that already time and again. Yeah. I'm sure. What makes you wonder the amount of wildfires we've had in California and how much? I've actually talked to an expert about that, and they, he actually said it would work for us because it would actually um, it would push the bones underground, and then when the brush fires go um, past, they just takes the brush out. Oh. And um, for some reason, it's actually good that there's actually brush fires that have gone through, he said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was, I was worried about the fires. I was thinking, mm -hmm. that, oh my god, all the fires that go through California. Yeah. yeah. Now, have you ever done a gig? No, this will be my first. This will uh, be my first. They're really tedious. I, I know. And you're going to be out there. I know you do the grid search and everything. Skimming yeah. the top and then sits and everything. And the bones yeah. are going to come up and they're going to look like rocks. I know they have to be careful if it's animal bones and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 I've so, been starting to like do my research on bones, like animal versus yeah. human, and learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I find a bone is like screaming, I think it was, I can't. Yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> yeah, another an animal bone or something. Congrats. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Such a good server, Brittany. Thank you. It's my first time. Oh, for vodka to tequila. young. Yeah. Whiskey is next. So you have done the search, I assume, like the searches? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... It stops being fun after about the first 15 seconds, and then it's just, it's going to take several days. Yeah. And especially if you have a body farm, that could turn into massive. And it, it, yeah. it's like, I was up there for like half an hour, and I have a picture. My skin, a third of it hurt. I, I oh, burn. really? It was, it's your, it's at the top of yeah. the mountains. Yeah. Oh. Are you doing topless? No, I had a tank top oh. on, oh. and I wasn't, I was literally out there for a half an hour, and third of it on my shoulder. 
It was crazy. Because yeah. you have no protection from the sun. I, was, I didn't realize it was that strong at the top of the mountains. Yeah. You know, I was, yeah. I've never been in the California top of the mountains before, so right. I, yeah, now I've learned. Yeah, right. <laughs> the hard way. Yeah. You have to find an army of interns to work this shit. Yeah. Sure. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. The rookies. Sure. Anthro <laughs> anthropology students or something. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Huh. There you go. Put them to work. Yep. <laughs> Well, this has been a fun little conversation, and I appreciate the fact you came in, and I appreciate the fact that all of you came in as well. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. It was a very yeah. interesting yeah, meeting. Like you. And I wish Phil would have given you the right time. Oh my God, they were amazing. And you for giving us a tour. Thank you for allowing me. Well, we'll have you come back for the uh, the Horning Twenties tour at some point. Oh my God, I'd love that. Yeah, Milwaukee was known as the uh, the best entertainment city in the country from 1885 until 1910. You were there, I think, Phil, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, more, more brothels than anywhere. Yeah. So last night we actually got in our flapper outfits. Really? Yeah, oh. we were in our flapper outfits. Oh. We were, wanted to take a picture of standing in our flapper. Yeah. No, of course. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Right. It's 1920s. And did you do that? No, well, because we he wasn't now. here and they, they didn't want to here. Damn staff. Yeah. <laughs> but, cool. Yeah. Neat. Well, good. here, cheers to everybody, and uh, again, thanks cheers. for taking the time Thank to be here. You cheers. Thank you. Very nice meeting you. Chin, chin, chin. Cheers. 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 <laughs> oh, this is the That's sipping. a wrap. <laughs> this is the sipping guy, is it? <laughs> Can be. Do you have any ketchup? Uh, Joe, I, did you get some? No. <laughs>